Hello and welcome to your 8th tutorial in Pokemon Games using LWJGL. Today we're going to start moving into 3D, because 3D is more fun than 2D. So, the first thing we're going to need to do is change our init OpenGL method down here. So we're going to get rid of everything that's in it now, even though most of it we're going to keep, but I'm just going to go over it all again, really quickly. So, we're going to want to set up the matrix mode as the projection matrix. Um, cl clear the matrix like we always do. And then we're going to want to use a GLU class, which is something that you'll have to import differently. Uh, I'm just going to check that this has imported itself. Uh, yep, java.util.glue.glue. Um, GLU is just, I don't know why this was never included in the OpenGL wrapper, but who knows. I know GLU and OpenGL have different library aspects in C++, but other than that, I'm stumped. So this, as you can already tell, is going to be our field of view. Um, I don't know why it says field of view Y because it's not actually. Well, it kind of is your field of view along the Y axis, but we'll get into that later. Well, we won't, but <laughs> let's make that 75. In games, you would usually have it like 90, but. Well, PC games, you'd usually have it at 90, but. We're going to keep this different, so. Um, we're then going to want to do width divided by height for the aspect ratio but we want to make sure that we cast them to floats otherwise we're not going to get decimals and that will come up with some very weird things the Z near is basically how near objects get killed off so we can't so it's easier if I explain the kind of far one um, we can't have objects rendering forever so f that big number that I just typed in there is how the maximum distance we can see this small number is the minimum distance we can see kind of thing so yeah to set one to small really small and one to really big is generally what you do there and then we're going to want to recall the geometrix mode just like normal but we're going to want to call the gl model view matrix this time um, and i think that's about it for now there will be depth testing that we'll need to get into later but that's not so important now so now if we run this going to notice that our thing has disappeared and that's because we need to actually move it backwards so for some reason there's a I've did this it's been a long while since I've done any tutorials I don't know why a lot of things are where they are um, but yeah let's move this let's First, first of all, let's just change these to vertex 3Fs. Oh no, I'm changing the texture coordinates now, aren't I? <laughs> Oops. Um, naught. And then I'm just going to copy this down all the way and change this number to 3. Okay. So, we run this now. We're still gonna, not going to get anything, but we just because we need to translate this thing backwards a bit. So we're going to call GL translate f not not negative uh, five point not f. Okay, I'm going to run this, and we're not going to get anything. Why are we not going to get anything? Um, clearing a color buff a bit. Um, it's not to do the load identity, is it? yes it is why is the load identity causing issues okay let's just make this a push and pop matrix for now as it was that's probably why it was that actually because that wasn't working I'll have to research that because having a uh, having a load identity sh there should reset the matrix without us having to push and pop the matrix in to be fair I think they I think they had the same visual effect just slightly differently um, or maybe it was just like we need to move that further back or something um, 
Yep. So that's really far from the distance. Let's try putting a. <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm just kind of like exploring. Um. Ah, where am I going? <laughs> uh, let's put the GL load identity there. Um, and we'll put that there, and we should be good to go. Yep, there we go. Okay. So now that's actually rendered in 3D space. Um. And we need to re-enable textures. Forgot that. So the cool thing is, is that this texture is going to be fully compatible with our 3D scene. So it will render onto this little cube thing. It's upside down, but oh well. Um, why is that upside down? Oh, yeah. We'll get into that later. Um, after this, we're going to call the G11.gl. Rotate F, and we're just going to say pass it an angle variable. Say so give it this, um, and then we're going to rotate it along all the angles. I'm going to float angle. Oops, put that there. Angle plus plus. Okay, and if we run this now. We're going to see that this thing is going to rotate around in a kind of 3D space, which is really cool. And that's what we want to see. So we've got our basic kind of setup for 3D going now. And I think that's just about it for this tutorial. So um, I'll see you next time.